Hello everyone, I'm Chris Fox from Ron Associates. I'm the Low Voltage Systems Lead Engineer, and today we're going to talk about no one's favorite topic, wire harnesses in the Rivian. Um, so we're going to start with the IP, the instrument panel first. Um, now I do want to give Rivian credit for getting the production, like they've done the impossible, but there's a number of areas that need to be looked at more closely and corrected if they want to continue production. Um, First and foremost, we want to point out this panel here, this sits on the hinge pillars of the body. This is actually kind of a neat execution. We've seen Land Rover do this before, um, where all of their connectors are snapped into these pre-fitted areas. Um, you might think this is a cost hit and a weight hit, and it is to an extent, but what this allows them to do is these connectors are always going to be in the same location and the same orientation every time. So when the instrument panel is installed and they need to marry the body harness to them, it's very consistent, it's very easy to get to. So an operator is not having to fumble with two separate loose connectors. Um, so this is actually a pretty clean execution. It's a little bit heavier than we're used to seeing, but it's headed in the right direction. Um, on the top cover of the instrument panel, I believe Carl covered this in a previous episode, we do have a bit more content that we're used to seeing on a top cover. It's a different execution. Um, one area of concern over here is the 12 volt pyro fuse. Um, normally these are used when the 12 volt battery is not accessible under hood. Some areas have requirements that you say you have to have it. Some say you don't. Rivian erred on the side of caution for this. Um, Point of concern, this did not show up in the NFPA manuals. Um, it probably should have because it's a pyrotechnic, so that leads me to believe this was a late addition. So this ends up residing just above the cluster. Now, what this does in the event of a collision, this will cut 12 volt power to the entire vehicle, which means all the batteries die, everything else is dead. Um, it will de-energize the contactors, making the contactors open, and that will cut the high voltage power, which makes it safer for first responders to approach the vehicle after a collision, so there's little to no chance of a short circuit. When we do see these in other vehicles, typically the Germans, they'll put them either right on top of the 12-volt battery or very close to it, which minimizes the route that power has to flow through this, rather than coming from the batteries all the way up through the IP. The other benefit to that German execution on the battery is it's much more serviceable. Like in a little fender bender, there's a chance this can go off and not do any major damage to the vehicle. But the way Rivian has this packaged in order to service this, the service tech has to go and reach underneath the instrument panel, remove the PAB, the passenger airbag connectors, some of the harnesses, rip this whole top cover off, which is a class A surface, so we don't want to pry on that very much to get to that little connector down there, which is very, very risky. Um, so we're going to move over to the powertrain bay. This was a unique execution I have not come across yet. Um, so Rivian has two 12 volt batteries sitting right up front. So they have a 12 volt battery and EV is pretty normal. That handles a lot of the accessory components. So non powertrain specific components. But more importantly, the 12 volt batteries are there to actuate the contactors, which turns on the high voltage battery, which powers the whole vehicle. To have two of them, definitely kind of on the weird side. But what's even stranger is they have two separate DC DC converters. So they've split vehicle power down the middle. So the left to control power to the left and the right to control power to the right. Um, so when we disconnected these during the teardown, yeah, we lost everything on one side of the vehicle. Um, not 100% sure why they did that yet. We'll have to give that a bit more thought. But it's unique for sure. Next up, we have a coaxial wire lead. Um, so coaxial wire is short for the concentric axis or something like that. So we have basically one wire shielded inside. This is used mostly for cameras in the automotive world. Um, to use coax for cameras for Rivian is nothing unique. Pretty much everybody uses this. But what is concerning though, is they have this huge strain relief bundle that was coiled up and tape marked. So this came from the plant like this. Um, that tells me this is 
unused and way too long right now and coiling it up this tight um, runs the risk of breaking the jacket or the conductor in the center rendering this completely useless. So this seems like it was a last minute omission perhaps, we're not 100% sure yet. Um, next up we have a defroster grid, they use some flat wire under here that runs underneath the frit. So it's not visible to the driver, but it sits under the park position of the wipers. Um, we've run into issues in other programs where the wiper park position is too high and then the HVAC can't defrost them and they get frozen to the windshield. So this makes sure you, your windshield wipers never actually get frozen to the windshield and don't have to use the HVAC to thaw them out. So kind of a neat execution there. Um, on the interior of the cabin, uh, this is definitely some unorthodox packaging. We've got a pair of fuse boxes, one on the passenger side and one on the driver's side. So passenger fuse box and then likewise on the driver's side, the same thing. Now the fuses are accessed from the underside, which means they don't have to have an access panel or a cover panel and they're not really prone to getting anything spilled on them which is kind of neat but normally we would see these fuse panels mounted perpendicular to their orientation here. Um, this was only really doable because they don't have a glove box on this side. Uh, point of concern on the troughs. Um, we have blue painter's tape in a few spots and those are paint marked meaning they were quality inspected. Normally we would see the, um, a vinyl electrical tape wrap or something like that but painter's tape is definitely out of the norm and I kind of question the need for that. Um, the only other quasi application I can think of where I've seen something close to this is on the Hyundai vehicles they will tape mark the left, harness, left side of the body harness versus the right side of the body harness. But that's again done with a vinyl tape, something a bit more durable than masking tape. But in this case with Rivian, they're both blue. So we can rule that out as a possibility. Moving further in vehicle, um, this would typically be a big no-no to most OEMs. We've got a pierced hole in the body, and this is a steel panel. Uh, we've got the body harness running over here, and granted this hole has some flared edge, edges to it, um, but the harness is just crammed right in there. There's no grommet, there's no abrasion wrap, there's no nothing. It's just the typical cloth tape. Um, these edges are not super, super sharp, but running down the road, this does pose an abrasion risk to the harness. Um, if the harness abrades, obviously we have an open circuit condition and we can cut functionality to any circuit in here. There are grounds all over the vehicle. Um, I would argue a signature of Droxelmeyer, their harness supplier. Um, there's a handful of harness suppliers in the world. Sumitomo, Izaki are the big two. Droxelmeyer tends to do more of the German ones. Um, KSH. KSHG, I probably butchered that acronym, is, does more of the Chinese ones and Aptives here and there, but Droxmire likes to use the acorn nuts over their grounds. Um, it's not really 100% necessary, but if you've got installers coming in and out of the vehicle on a regular basis to do other installation operations, um, this does protect them a little bit. It seems a little excessive though. Uh, we're going to cut over to, oh, that's right. In the C pillar here, according to the NFPA manual, there is a 12 volt cut loop inside the C pillar. So there's one up front, which is normal, up in the powertrain bay, but to have one inside of a pillar is a bit unorthodox. I'll give Rivian credit for that because it gives first responders another access point to cut power in a collision in case the front is not accessible. Uh, so we're gonna move over to the other side of the vehicle. Um, so on this side of the vehicle, oh sorry, some of their grounds they are using welded lugs. Um, maybe come back to the shot of that later. Um, so welded lugs are a bit more expensive, but they are much more reliable. So I would kind of anticipate these to be cost reduced out over time. Rivian probably did this as like an insurance measure for a first release. 
Um, Chrysler used those for quite a while and they've since toned those back. But while we're in this part of the vehicle, we do have another concern on the body harness as it reaches the telematics controller. So the telemax controller is the silver box back here on the back cab wall, which means we have a whole bunch of coaxial cables here for all of our antennas. Coaxial antenna is pretty normal, but we have it coiled around the body harness here. Um, coiling it tends to indicate that we just have way too much of it here. Like that's too much even for like a strain relief. Um, and every time we bend coax, we run the risk of damaging it and therefore it doesn't work. So that's a risky and expensive maneuver there. And then back up to the front on this side, we have a couple of build issues. Um, again, more coax. This is on the driver's side. So we have a brown lead leading into a teal connector. Typically we don't want to mix colors. We want the operators to match color to color. So it's much easier, much faster to connect them. Um, this can be very error prone. You say, oh yeah, match the brown to something else. That can be very confusing. Um, and the connector right next to it is secured with electrical tape, which means that probably got broken during installation. They did a quick field repair. Um, normally what you do is you disconnect the TPA and redo that connection. So the TPA is short for terminal positive assurance. Um, pretty much every connector on this vehicle is one of those. The TPA just means that the pins can't be pulled back out once they're installed. Um, the squibs, if you can find one down there, um, are fairly conventional, but they're not the most modern. So a squib is used on anything that is safety related, so airbags, seat belts, retractors, that um, impact sensors, that sort of thing. But these are not spring loaded. These are just a CPA connector positive assurance. So once this goes in to its respective component, the CPA itself has to be snapped into place. So it's a two step process to make sure this is absolutely in place. Now Ford and Honda use the more modern spring loaded ones. Um, we can take a look at those in a minute. Um, what those do, if they're not properly seated, the connector will actually eject off of the component, making it blatantly obvious that it was never actually connected properly in the first place. Down here at the amplifier, these are some really, really tight bends on these cables here. Um, I'm not aware of any other OEM who would accept these kind of really, really sharp bends. Um, sharp bends. Typical rule for a harness is we don't want the harness to bend tighter than 1.5 times the diameter of the cable itself. We start running the risk of breaking them. And anytime a wire harness breaks, we can't use it anymore. Um, there was one defect I am impressed they did not find so far um, on a sealed connector. Let's go find one here. So hats off to Rivian for actually doing a good job on this one. We've seen this on other more mature OEMs. So on a sealed connector, you can see the grommets inside. Um, this is to make sure that no water gets in from the back side of the connector because we'll have something else on this side. But if we consider this distance to be X, this distance to be Y, and the distance from the back face of the connector out to where it's taped to be Z, if Z is shorter than X or Y, what happens is those wires get pulled to the center line and you might be able to see a gap appear within the grommets. Um, so Rivian was very diligent about that and they kept their tape distances back far enough. So good job to Rivian on that one. So that's all we found so far in our first week of this teardown. Uh, hopefully we'll find some more nuggets for you. So keep coming back and stay tuned. Thank you and good night.